It's Tuesday, July 7. Good afternoon. I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. A special welcome to those of you watching online at onespotmedia.com. Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chan, is expressing concern about the growing brazenness of some residents when interacting with the police. His comments come amidst another video making the rounds on social media with residents and the police clashing. We have the details in this report. This video shows a man and a police officer in a confrontation. The police officer fired several rounds in the air, but that fails to give him control of the converging crowd or the man he was trying to arrest. In fact, one resident can be heard saying they hear shots every day and will not move. The JCF's communication arm says they have made checks about the video, but they have had no formal report about the incident. They say they are unable to say when and where it was. For some observers, it is a sign of the increasing disregard for law enforcement. To others, it is a reminder to security forces of the need to ensure their operations respect human rights of citizens. Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang did not comment specifically on that incident, but says he noted the clashes with security forces and residents. And the security forces are particular concern because it is an attack on the state and shows a great disrespect for law and order in its entirety. And it is of the government is taking close note and will be taking steps to try and reduce that aspect of it. But Dr. Chang feels that the security forces have improved. He feels some of the recent work by the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, is proof of the strides made by the security forces, in particular the police. When you look at the investigation from Indicom, it's, um, it's, it's less than 5% that goes to any kind of um, <coughs> disciplinary measures. I think there are 4 out of 600 that was charged, in which charges were laid. <coughs> in the fatal shooting, 2 of them were domestic shootings. Um, killings and uh, I think 36 case referred for disciplinary measures. So you can see the emergence of almost a very professional force conduct themselves in a manner that we will we, we, we desire. Prince Moore, TVJ News. Two men were shot dead in Vineyard St. Elizabeth last night. The dead men have been identified as 39 year old Kenyatta Williams, an employee of a shop in the community, and 31 year old Lance Salmon. It's reported that both men were outside Mr. Sa Mr. Williams' place of employment when they were approached by two men armed with guns who fired at them. They were taken to the hospital and later pronounced dead. TVJ News understands that there has been tension in the community for some time now. And several persons, including children, are now homeless after a fire destroyed their home in Kencott St. Andrew last night. As you'll hear in this report, up to news time, the cause of the fire was still not known. This is what's left of the place several families called home in Kencott, St. Andrew. The building, which stood at 27 and a half Central Road, was destroyed by fire about midnight on Monday. The occupants were sleeping when the structure caught fire. I am house. My mother come wake me up say fire, fire, fire. When I pull the window and come out, I tell you, nothing. I don't see nothing for me and my baby. Nothing. No, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to turn. When she wake me, I'm going to open the window, I turn idiot. I never experienced this before. Never. Can you reach up to my door? A pay fire, I say, I come through my door. They have two closets, I have my closet, I have two suitcases, I lock up and full up. I couldn't even go out one. I have to back off. Cause fire come through the door, I have two cylinders in there, I can't put in there. If you go in there, I go out two cases and cylinder blow up. But when you look through the passage, it's there we see the smoke blaze and I run and lick, up, lick down my neighbor's them door and I saw everybody come out. But we don't save anything, everything is burned up. No one knows for sure what caused the blaze. The York Park Fire Station was alerted and a total of six units responded. The units from the York Park, Trenchdown, Halfway Tree and Stonehill Fire Stations were dispatched. It is not ascertained how the fire started. However, the fire is now under control. 
and investigations will be carrying out. Some residents managed to save a few household items while others were only able to save their lives. You know me, but the greatest thing, I'm glad my baby alive. The picture may not be all gloomy for the fire victims, as Member of Parliament for East Central St. Andrew, Dr. Peter Phillips, says he will provide some assistance for them to rebuild. The priority now is to bring some relief to the families directly affected and to ensure that you know those who lost everything can be taken care of in the morning along with the various agencies we will be doing our assessment as to how best to rehabilitate because it's a very difficult time for everybody and we really need to ensure that we can bring some relief to those who are now destitute because of this tragic fire. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. Technology will be the driving force for the upcoming general election, which, though constitutionally due in 2021, is widely expected this year. The details in this report. It will be a battle fought using technology in this political campaign, as this general election will be conducted under restrictions imposed to prevent the spread of COVID-19. It's likely that there will be no mass rallies and motorcades given gatherings can't be more than 20. It's why both political parties are now skewing their methods of engagement to social media and other technologically based platforms. For co-campaign director for the People's National Party, the PNP, Philip Paulwell, COVID-19 has given the party the chance to revamp its outdated analog campaign strategy. Speaking at the PNP's Region 1 and 6 meeting in St. James on Sunday, he said work has already begun to build out an information management system. That system, Mr. Paulwell notes, will enable the PNP to operate more smartly and with analytical data. He says the information gleaned will also help the party to understand more about the voting public. For me, it is the most critical work that we have to do to win their are other things to be done. But for me, this is the most critical area. He says it is even more important as the use of technology in the island was spearheaded by successive PNP administrations. Our path is not quite clear. We are the party that brought in the full use of computer telecommunications, analytics, the digital economy. Is the People's National Party open up telecoms? Is the People's National Party that was determined to make internet access across the length and breadth of Jamaica? JLP General Secretary Dr. Horace Chang says the party is at an advantage as they have already started to use technology to get their message across. He, however, noted that with COVID-19 and the increased usage of technology, some of the mechanisms may be adopted permanently. We could go into this and come out with a more mature political process in that we'll have to adopt much more <clears throat> um, engaging attitude to make communication with our constituents. Um, certainly... We are talking to the media here and they'll be, play, they'll be a critical part of what we do. Dr. Chang says going the technological route will only augur well for politics in Jamaica as it will be less expensive. But as for the PNP, this charge from co-campaign director Philip Paulwell. We are not going to allow the Jamaica Labour Party to lead us in the use of technology as we go forward to win these elections. Rashid Masters, TVJ News. And we now take a break here on the Midday News, but stay with us. More news when we return. Welcome back. Continuing the news. Some employees at the St. Anne's Bay Hospital are up in arms with the management of the facility over payments they say they should be receiving. It comes as the employees say they have not been getting payments, which the government say should, should, is, is due to them. We have the details in this report. Where is our money? That's the question from a number of employees, some of whom deal with COVID-19 patients at the St. Anne's Bay Hospital on a regular basis. The employees say they have been querying the situation for months from the administration of the hospital, but no answer has been forthcoming. 
Hence, they took to the street Monday morning to air their grouses. As the person on the front line, or the persons on the front line, we are usually the first, first to get person. hit. We are in direct yeah, line of fire. On March 14, the health minister gave approval for an incentive of $3,000 per day for workers in isolation and quarantine facilities. The list of workers who are slated to benefit includes medical officers, registered nurses, enrolled assistant nurses, public health nurses, public health inspectors, ambulance drivers, orderlies and porters, housekeepers, hospital attendants, clinic attendants and security personnel. But some porters say they have not received any payment since March. According to them, they have been getting varying information. They told our news team that a book was placed in the isolation area for them to sign whenever they enter the area. However, that was removed. Over time, as I said, the rule keeps changing because the book was removed. People went there, people are assigned there also, which have not received any payment as yet. We don't know what is happening because since the book has been removed and that is the basis on which you will be paid. How come nobody has received any money as yet? And people and the claims submit their rejected. claims for this, it is being rejected. The workers have threatened to take legal action over the non-payment of the monies owed to them. When we spoke to Chief Executive Officer at the hospital, Delroy Morgan, he noted that there has been some delay in processing the claims. What I will do from my desk is to inquire as to the time frame upon which those claims that have been submitted, which includes porters, drivers and attendants, as to when um, payment can be expected. But it's not for lack of anything untoward, like we don't, they, we don't want them to get paid. That is not the matter. But we have to ensure that all I's are dotted, T's are crossed. Hence, this promise from the CEO. I am going to check to see if any of those members put in a claim that was not honored. And why? I doubt it though, that they would have put in a claim and a legitimate claim and it was denied. And even if that's the case, an explanation would have been given to them through their head of department. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. We go down to news overseas. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro has tested positive for COVID-19. Bolsonaro's press office confirmed on Tuesday that the president was being treated with hydroxychloroquine and was awaiting the results of his fourth COVID-19 test in four months. He reassured supporters on Monday outside the presidential palace in Basilia that he had taken a test and his lungs were clean following media reports that he had a fever. The president said he was showing symptoms consistent with COVID-19, including a 38 degrees Celsius temperature. Bolsonaro has derided coronavirus as just a little flu and previously appeared in public and at rallies without a mask, even hugging supporters. Brazil is second only to the United States in numbers of coronavirus infections and deaths worldwide. More than 65,000 people have died of the virus in Brazil, according to figures released by the country's health ministry on Monday. Over one million cases have been confirmed so far. We go down to news in sports. Jamaican student athletes who currently attend U.S. colleges could have to consider other options if their universities switch to online-only courses in light of COVID-19. This as the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, announced Monday that such students will have to leave the country or risk deportation if their universities go the route of delivering their courses strictly online. Many universities are already making that transition because of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, in a news release Monday, ICE said that students who fall under certain visas may not take a full online course load and remain in the United States, adding that the United States Department of State will not issue visas to students enrolled in schools and or programs that are fully online for the fall semester, nor will U.S. Custom and Border Protection permit these students to enter the United States. The agency suggested that students currently enrolled in the U.S. consider other measures like transferring to schools with in-person instruction. There's an exception for universities using a hybrid model, such as a mix of online and in-person classes. And that's the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news sports and production teams, good afternoon.